Hello all and welcome to the channel. This channel is about sharing my love for watches with other watch nuts like myself. So if that is your kind of thing, don't hesitate to subscribe. There is many many videos online already and many more coming. Today we're going to be unboxing and doing a first impression review of one of the new Seiko 5 Sense models. This one has been nicknamed the Avogado because of the dial which resembles an actual Avogado. So before we start, today I am wearing my Seiko SKX007 for obvious reasons and uh, expect a comparison video, a full comparison video with this model coming up very soon. So let's proceed with the unboxing. I got the new Seiko 5 box, which is, I wouldn't say an improvement of the uh, previous ones, but it's uh, a bit more original with these kind of military pattern and these pretty nice gray. So what else do you get in the package? You get, of course, the documentation of your watch. Okay, this hasn't been filled up. And, uh, yep, yeah, there you go. Okay, let's settle that aside. Let's set that aside and focus on the watch itself. Okay, so, as you can see, this is the SRPD77K1, which means that is the version made for the uh, outside of Japan, for the international market. So, little pillow here, all right, okay, let's, let me see, all right, so, as I mentioned, I picked up this one, even though I prefer some other models, but I picked this one up because I thought it was the most original of all with that quirky dial. Seiko states that the case has been finished with uh, some kind of carbon titanium alloy. And as you can see, yeah, it is different, of course, in tone than the one from the SKX. It's much darker. So, as for the dimensions, we've got a width of 42.5 millimeters, a height of 13.5 millimeters, a log to log, well, I measure it at 45.5, and uh, a log width of 22. So, very, very similar to the case of the SKX. It does look a lot like an SKX. It feels like an SKX, and uh, let's see the uh, the weird thing would be not unscrewing the crown, and this is very strange for me who has had an SKX for many many years, just not to have to unscrew to screw and unscrew the watch and just operate it like this. So okay. Let's see, let's see about the bezel action. And it's still a bit stiff, but it's uh, not very different from a usual SKX. But this one feels typical entry-level Seiko. Is there some back play? No? Okay, now, time for the truth, the first truth. Let's see if there's some misalignment on that chapter ring. And yes, there is a slight misalignment. I don't know if you can pick it up, but there is a misalignment at the six o'clock index. 12 is good. I mean, at first glance, 
but six is misaligned. Well, it's kind of reassuring, means you got an original Seiko, right? What we can say about this watch, I mean, the, uh, more, mo the most striking feature of this watch is its dial, of course. So that dial is supposed to resemble an Avogadro, an actual Avogadro. And uh, <laughs> I actually have an actual Avogadro. And yes, you can see that maybe that was the look they were going for. So, that being the first striking difference. The second one would be that second hand, which is completely um, orange. And that adds an extra touch of uh, uh, craziness, I guess. Because uh, usually Seiko, they don't do this, at least they didn't do this in their SKX line. The SKX was just uh, a black and white dial. And uh, yes, yeah, so that's it. And I also wanted to talk about that new Seiko 5 logo, the 5 logo, replacing the classic and usual shield. And uh, you know what? I am not a fan. I see what they were going for. They were going for a touch of modernity. But um, I don't th really think it resembles a 5. I mean, you really have to know that it's a 5. It's some kind of snake or inverted S. There you can clearly see it. But still, uh, I'm sure we will get used to it in time. And of course, let's not forget the loom video. And uh, besides from the pip that is absent when compared to the SKX models, I would say this loom is pretty outstanding, like most Seikos. So we'll be of course comparing that with the one from the SKX. And uh, they have put it on this NATO strap. And the first good news is that they have matched the hardware of the uh, NATO strap, the metal. They have even signed Seiko. And they have matched it with uh, the color, I mean, pretty much with the color of the case. What about the quality of these NATO? And, uh, well, it doesn't feel top quality. It's not like uh, the NATO from an Omega or an upper an upper brand doing natos but it's not it's not like a one or two dollar chinese nato either it has some nice fluidity and it feels pretty reassuring and the stitching is done okay i guess and of course what is the feeling of the movement yeah the winding is typical of four of, of a four hour movement it's pretty smooth, actually very smooth, but it feels reassuring. Okay, now let's go see that 4R movement, 4R, it's a 4R36. All right, there's a 4R, and the difference is that it's uh, uh, in the rotor, you have the Seiko 5 symbol. Otherwise, apart from that, it's your typical forearm movement. Let's see how it wears on wrist. And I strongly suspect that it wears a lot like the SKX. And yes, it is pretty much exactly like wearing an SKX. It's incredible how much it feels like an SKX. But what are the differences with the usual SKX? I'm going to be throwing a comparison video with the actual SKX 007 that this one is very inspired about. Because I'm very curious myself, that is why I bought this one to see what are the differences, what are the uh, uh, resemblances. 
and uh, of course everybody complained about the uh, uh, the uh, new models not being ISO 35 divers. Uh, everybody complained about the price. Everybody complained about so many different models which looked weird. So I think that uh, an in-depth comparison is necessary. So there we go. Stay tuned for that. So the million dollar question, is this supposed to replace the venerable and adored SKX? Well, I actually believe not. Um, I believe Seiko have taken a whole different approach to their marketing with this watch. They have taken a good basis, which was the uh, SKX, of course, that many people know, but they have marketed it very differently. This uh, line of watches, and I'm talking about the whole uh, new Seiko 5 line, but these five new lines, according to me at least, have not been made uh, for the watch enthusiast. We watch enthusiasts used to love the SKX. It was an affordable icon, and um, we would have all been very happy if they had just put a 4R on the usual SKX, on the normal SKX, and uh, be done with it. That would have made people really, really happy. But instead, they chose another route to look for new people, to look for younger people, to appeal to younger people. You just have to look at their campaigns and their videos that they have been doing. Um, this watch is marketed to younger audiences and to many, many different tastes that, it might, that, that they might have. Whether that is a good move for Seiko is, remains to be seen, but uh, I believe that they are trying to nip a bit on the heels of the uh, classic Vincero and uh, Daniel Wellingtons, and uh, I think that is a pretty smart move. Of course, it, uh, it left us watch aficionados a bit uh, sad and scared and disoriented, but marketing-wise, I believe it's a good move for Seiko. But that is, again, just my opinion. So, tell me what is yours. Is this replacement for the SKX? Uh, are they going to come out with another real SKX with an improved movement still? Uh, what do you think? What are your opinions? Let me know in the comments and uh, stay tuned for the uh, comparison with the SKX. Thank you again. And have a good time. Bye.